multiple federal judges have taken action to block the Trump administration's pro-life Protect Life policy. The Protect Life policy was set to begin in early May, but federal judges in Washington state, California, and Oregon all issued injunctions, which bar the regulation from going into effect. The policy prohibits groups that receive Title $10 from performing or referring for abortions. It would more strictly enforce existing regulations that bar the use of Title X funds for elective abortion procedures. The three judges were all confirmed during the Obama administration. Meanwhile, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and congressional Democrats are seeking to block the Protect Life rule in the Labor, Health and Human Services Appropriations Bill. Abortion advocates often refer to the Protect Life policy as the, quote, gag rule, claiming it censors health care providers from talking about abortion. But it does not prohibit non-directive counseling about the procedure. Joining us now to discuss these cases is Sarah Pitlick, special counsel for the Thomas More Society, a law firm which has filed an amicus brief in support of the Protect Life rule. Sarah joins us from St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. Sarah, first of all, several federal judges now have blocked the Protect Life rule. What's their justification for this? What are they saying? Well, um, the issue in the case is whether um, the Department of Health and Human Services essentially had an adequate justification for the rule. Um, and the judges are essentially saying that, no, they don't believe that the rule was adequately justified by mm -hmm. the Department of Health and Human Services before it promulgated it. And Sarah, clarify for us, is the Protect Life rule in keeping with existing federal law? Well, the Title X, the statute, has been in existence mm -hmm. since 1970, and it has always prohibited the use of Title X funds in programs where abortion is a method of family planning. Mm -hmm. The new regulations give effect to that prohibition in a more concrete way than the um, recent regulatory regime has done. Um, there's very good historical evidence also that this is a reasonable application of the Title X statute and its prohibition on the use of funds in that way, because in the 1980s, a similar set of regulations was promulgated um, under Title X, and those, those uh, regulations were challenged all the way up to the Supreme Court, which did hold that they were a reasonable interpretation of the statute. So the Department of Health and Human Services is on very solid ground, both on the basis of it, the statutory terms and historical evidence uh, that these particular regulations are a reasonable interpretation of it. Can you explain then the action that the Thomas More Society, the law firm you work for, took in support of the Protect Life rule? Sure. Well, we are representing the Susan B. Anthony List, which is a wonderful pro-life advocacy organization. Um, and they have done um, lots of work on this, many other pro-life issues. But uh, specifically in this case, uh, there's some research that one of their research divisions has done in the past about um, basically abuse of federal funds through the Medicaid programs by abortion, through the Medicaid program by abortion providers. Mm -hmm. So um, they're one of the arguments against the rule is that there's allegedly no evidence that abortion providers have abused Title X funds. Um, but uh, what the Susan B. Anthony list is pointing out in its brief, among other things, is that there is evidence of the same entities abusing federal funds in the Medicaid context. And that's not irrelevant to the question mm -hmm. of whether there should be concerns in this context. In fact, because of the way uh, the programs are administered, um, it's supposedly easier to abuse Title X funds uh, because of the way they're granted than it would be to abuse Medicaid funds. And we've seen Medicaid abuse, and so there's no reason to think that there might not be uh, abuse, similar abuse going on in the Title X context, or, re or at least the government has a legitimate reason to be concerned about that. That's very helpful. Thank you, Sarah. And finally, what are the next steps towards implementing the Protect Life rule? Do you foresee this being a long battle in the courts? It probably will go on for a while. Uh, the first step that's happened, as you said, is that it's been enjoined at a preliminary fa phase in the litigation. What that means is that um, even if this injunction holds, uh, the case is not over. It would have to then uh, be fully litigated before a permanent injunction was put in place. Um, and before that litigation gets started, there will most likely be an appeal of the preliminary 
uh, injunction. So we'll go to the appeals court now, or the government mm -hmm. will go to the appeals court now to try to get the preliminary injunction reversed. And however that turns out after probably many months, uh, it will then probably return to the trial court for a full litigation of the issues. Um, when the regulations are implemented depends, of course, on when on whether the courts lift the injunction against their implementation. And that's anybody's guess. Well, thank you for walking us through this and helping us to better understand these cases. Sarah Pitlick, Special Counsel for the Thomas More Society, thank you. Thank you. And joining us in studio for continued analysis is Marilyn Musgrave, a former U.S. representative for the state of Colorado and now the vice president of government affairs for the Susan B. Anthony List, a group working with the Thomas More Society law firm. Welcome back to the show. It's good to be here. Thanks for being here. Congresswoman, several federal judges now have blocked the Protect Life rule. But what do you think will ultimately be held up in the courts? Well, first of all, to be expected from the Ninth Circuit, you know, we always get these kinds of rulings from them. But you can look back to the 90s to Russ versus Sullivan, mm -hmm. and I have every confidence that this will be held up in court because it's just statutory, uh, it's regulations based upon statutes. And you know, the abortion industry always tries to pretend like abortion is health care, abortion is contraception, it is neither. Right. What does this tell us about the role of the courts in upholding pro-life policy? Well, when I think of this president, the most pro-life president ever, his legacy will be the courts. Mm. And Catherine, I think of my children and my mm. grandchildren. Mm. This will be for decades to come. And the courts, they've been so uh, skewed towards the pro-abortion lobby. Mm -hmm. Any state effort, any restriction, a modest restriction on abortion has been struck down by the courts. We'll have new judges, and, and I really believe that this particular thing mm -hmm. will be upheld by the court. Mm. And as this is all happening in the courts, it's coming as congressional Democrats and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi are seeking to block the Protect Life rule in the Labor, Health, and Health and Human Services Appropriations Bill. What should we know about those efforts happening? Well, first of all, when you think of Appropriations Committee, it's a very powerful committee. Mm. It has 12 subcommittees. There are 30 Democrats on it. 23 Republicans. There's some mm. very strong pro-life heroes on there. There's a commitment by Kay Granger from Texas, the mm. ranking member. That means that the top Republican on the committee, mm -hmm. uh, Martha Roby's on there, Tom Cole. There's some great pro-life heroes and they'll be fighting every step of the way. But the Democrats on that committee, and I, I hate to classify that party mm -hmm. in such a way, they are beholden to Planned Parenthood and the abortion lobby. So they're going to be doing everything they can to erode the, the riders, which is another word for the amendments that have been pro-life through the years, and go after uh, this protect life rule. But the, the beautiful thing is the Republicans will stand strong, they'll mm -hmm. make the case, and if it does happen in committee, the worst case mm -hmm. scenario, the president will veto it. We have right. that commitment from our president. If it weakens, the pro-life cause, he will veto. So let's talk about this policy. How do you think the Protect Life rule will truly uphold and save lives? Well, it will save lives, definitely, mm -hmm. because when you think of abortion providers, you know, they love to be in, you know, the same building with the family planning people. Mm -hmm. uh, they love to co-locate. They love to be able to refer. Uh, and now this president, mm -hmm the secretary of HHS, Azar, boldly say, don't pretend like it's family planning. No, this is Title X dollars, mm -hmm. taxpayer dollars, going for family planning. And if you're doing family planning, you can't do abortion. You can't refer, you can't co-locate. So lives will be saved. And Catherine, we know money is fungible. Yeah. So if those abortion providers get family planning dollars, they can use them for abortion, taking the lives of innocent children. Finally, there was some other major news, major pro-life news. The Trump administration finalized new regulations to protect the conscience rights of health care workers. Can you speak about this and the significance of this update? Well, under the Obama administration, that was not enforced at all. Mm. So now under this president, under this administration, they're very serious. And what good news this week with this regulation on conscience protections. Catherine, mm -hmm. at a time in our country when we're wanting more people to get into health care, we need more doctors, mm -hmm. we need nurses, we don't want them in the position as a nurse Kathy DiCarlo in New York was, 
having to assist in a late-term abortion to keep her job. We wanted to, uh, these people to be able to have their deeply held beliefs protected. It's very big and we're just grateful to have your analysis and week. all of it. Yes, yes. It's a lot going on and again, thank you so much for being here. Marilyn Musgrave, Vice President of Government Affairs for the Susan B. Anthony List. Thank you. It's a good week.